And now Carrie's going to talk about the impacts of executive functioning. And so I'm, I'm going to give you like just a couple examples um, that the kids, you know, may experience throughout the school day or at home. Um, and then just how each one of the, the list that Nicole went through, how, you know, that would relate in their situation. So I'm going to have us just go back and um, just think about that video with Jake um, and how, you know, it was social interaction. It, it, the, his executive functions were impacted with his social interaction, peer relationship, and his behavior. So, um, you know, when they're playing in PE, they're playing the game, um, he was hit, he was out, <laughs> but he was, you know, refusing. He, he may have known the rules, but at the time, you know, he had the rules in his working memory, but at the time, he was like, not gonna move, not gonna budge, not, not gonna sit out. And so then his, you know, he couldn't shift, you know, that to follow the rule. So at that time, you know, his emotions became heightened and then, you know, he acted out. I mean, he tried to use his words and say, I'm not out, I'm not out. But then, you know, he got physical and pushed the boy out and then, you know, the teacher had to intervene. So, you know, all, a lot of those, um, executive functions were all heightened in his behavior. <laughs> and, um, and that just kind of shows how, you know, even though he may have known, you know, what was the right thing to do, he kind of, um, you know, put it to the wayside in the, mo in the heat of the moment. Um, so another example, and Nicole touched on this, is in the classroom. What, so if a teacher is standing up and giving an assignment or teaching an assignment and your students at the desk, how they have to shift from the teacher back down to what's, what they have to do. Also just, you know, focusing on what's being presented to them up front and kind of drown out if they hear anything in the hallway or, you know, if a classmate's making noises or, you know, just any distractions. And um, so they really have to take all those areas, like monitor themselves, you know, keep their emotions in check, um, be flexible and be able to shift from the teacher to their work, um, you know, and, and keep what the assignment is in their working memory so that they can go and act on it. Um, and then as Nicole was talking about, start the initiation process, organize themselves and say, okay, I need to work on this now. I might have math homework that I got you know, from my other teacher, but this is what I have to do now. Um, you know, and then just complete the project <laughs> or the assignment. So, um, and then a third example is, um, like if you think about a situation where um, they're in the cafeteria or in, well, here they eat in the multi-purpose room. So if they have, it's lunchtime and whether their, you know, their lunch is waiting for them, it's been bought, but it, say it might be something that they know they don't like, um, you know, they are, they're not gonna be super excited to eat lunch, um, but they know, okay, I have this 20 minute period, you know, they know they have their set time, and say they come into the cafeteria and, oh, they can't sit next to who they want, but, but they still need to sit down you know, eat lunch because you, they have that schedule to follow. So they have to be able to shift and change their emotions and, you know, sit down and still then go through all the peer interactions and, you know, converse, maybe start conversation, answer questions that are coming at them all while at the same time, you know, trying to finish their lunch in that set period of time because it can't go over. <laughs> So, so I have a question a to piggyback on that. <laughs> Who gets lunch boxes with full lunches in them? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> a yeah. lot of when we walk out of the the multi-purpose room with the kids, it's funny because we're like, "What did you eat?" Yeah. <laughs> it's like half the lunch is still there. Yeah. Um, so it's good. It's good if they're right. eating a full lunch. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think you know those less structured environments, lunch, recess. Right field trips, you know, right. those can be the most challenging times for our kids that are struggling mm -hmm. with executive function because there isn't necessarily a programmed order. 
-hmm. like or a set, and they have to change they're changing their schedule mm -hmm. and routine mm -hmm. yeah and it and it the demands coming at them are so much higher and they're like what am i doing am i talking to my friends or am i eating or am i doing both you know so there are children you know when they're just talking and talking and socializing which is great but they haven't touched their lunch and it's like okay you have five more minutes five more minutes you know you need to eat um, and then you have the, the child that's just there eating and eating and it's like they don't really engage with those around them. So um, it, lunch we time is a really down. exciting time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's really interesting. If you want to learn more about your child, just go and peek through and watch yeah. them at lunch. <laughs> You'll learn a lot. Yeah. Um, so those, those are some good examples though. And, and these things happen all day. You guys, you, you know, know this. <laughs> it, these things happen all day. So. I have quite an extensive list here of possible signs. It's not an exhaustive list, but it is definitely um, things that I think several of you may be able to relate to. So the first bullet there is just talking about frustration level and children becoming easily frustrated, not having that inhibition and that emotional control. And so they do respond to how they're feeling. And it's okay, we want our children to have feelings. You know, we want them to be able to express their feelings, but there's appropriate ways to express our feelings in appropriate times. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that, you know, may be a sign if you're seeing a lot of frustration, that may be a sign that they're struggling with executive functioning. Uh, they may have frequent tantrums. So these are the tantrums where it's like, you put your shoes on every day, like, just put your shoes on, let's go. You know, it doesn't seem like the tantrum matches the situation and you're going, this, is, this isn't a big deal. But to them, it is a big deal for whatever reason. Their sock feels funny. It's not the shoes they want to wear, you know, whatever the situation may be. Maybe they didn't have the right breakfast that morning and it's now flowing into putting their shoes on. Um, it, you may also question executive functioning if you see them acting out aggressively. So if they go kind of zero to 100 and there's no real in between, it's not like it revs up, it's like, everything's fine and then all of a sudden there's this really big emotional response. We do question, okay, is there something going on with the executive functioning? What triggered this big emotional upset? Um, completing simple routines. So something that they do every single day, every single day, you brush your teeth every single day, we get dressed, put our shoes on, go to school. But whenever you're seeing them struggle with that routine, something they've done every day and you're going, we do this every day. Why? Why? Why do I have to say this every day? That may be an executive functioning difficulty. They may having, be having difficulty with initiation. They may be having difficulty with working memory, with recalling the steps. So that is something to definitely kind of tune into and see what part of the process is the breakdown really occurring so we can address that. They may have trouble following directions. So again, this is the working memory component and that cognitive regulation. So you give them two or three things to do and it's as if you didn't say anything or maybe they only remember one of those three steps. Um, rigidity, insisting to do things in a very particular way. They brush their teeth in a very particular way and then they wash their face after that. And today you're asking them to wash their face before they brush their teeth and they're like, I, I can't, I can't do that. That's not how this works. Like I brush my teeth, then I wash my face. Or sometimes it's even like, I see this a lot when you pick them up from school and typically, you know, okay, it's Monday, we go to karate. And then this Monday there's no karate. And they're like, wait, wait it's Monday. Monday's karate day. Like, what, what, what do you mean we're not going to karate? You know, and kind of getting stuck and then you're like, well, it's a holiday or, you know, whatever the situation may be. Um, and they kind of get stuck and then that kind of sets the snowball effect for the rest of the evening. It's like, they don't know what to do because this is not the routine. This is, you know, and you see that emotional upset then come from that oftentimes. Um, frequently gives unrelated answers to questions. <laughs> Sometimes you will see this, like you ask them a question and all of a sudden they're like talking about the dog or what happened at recess and you ask them what they wanted for dinner. <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay, I want to hear about that, but what do you want for dinner? You know, it's trying to kind of bring them back in. And a lot of times what we're seeing with these kiddos is that their mind is kind of going so many directions at one time. It's like, 
they have good intentions to answer what they want for dinner, but there's so many other things that kind of need to come out first. Um, and so, you know, breaking down your questions, making them very simple, you know, and sometimes even just providing the choices of, like, do you want a hot dog for dinner? Do you want pizza for dinner? You know, make it very simple, very concrete for them. Um, so sometimes you'll see that they start on something, like maybe they're doing homework, but then you walk away and you come back and now all of a sudden they're like playing with their pencil and you're like, are you working on their homework? And they're like, oh yeah. And meanwhile, 10 minutes has passed and nothing's done on that homework sheet. <laughs> and that's because they're getting easily distracted and so they're not able to do that task monitoring to kind of keep themselves on track. We all do that all day long, especially now in the technology age that it is. The phone dings, the email pops up, you know, whatever it might be. Your child interrupts you to ask you a question. <laughs> but the difference is, is you can shift, attend to that for a brief moment and come back to the task that you need to be doing. Uh, focusing on the least important thing you said or a minor detail. These are the things where it's like you give them an instruction and they focus on something that's really the least significant thing, like what coat they have to wear. <laughs> and you're like, okay, it doesn't matter. You can wear any coat. It doesn't matter. That's not the point of what I need you to do. But they get so stuck on this little detail that really is insignificant in the big picture of things. Um, also, they, these are children that often mix up assignments. So they will, you know, they know they have a project due for like social studies or history but they don't bring those things home and they bring home their math book. And it's like, okay, do you have math homework? No. Okay, so why do we have our math book when you need your history and social studies books? You know? So they get confused that way. Um, these are also the kids that, I have to laugh at this because I see this a lot here, but the kids that it's like, they never have a pencil. They never have a pencil, but they start the year with like 30 pencils and the teacher has a cup of 20 pencils, but yet this child never has a pencil, or the pencil they do have is like this big with no eraser. Um, it's like, where's all your pencils? And they're like, I don't know. It's that organizational piece, right? Of like, okay, things have a proper place. Let's put them back where they belong. But it's, they get so distracted along the way that then pencils just end up, I don't know, in pencil heaven, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they all go. Um, uh, panicking when rules or routines change. So this kind of piggybacks on what we were saying earlier. Sometimes, you know, if a child or even an adult, you have an expectation about the way things are going to happen. I can relate to this this morning. <laughs> I have an expectation. It takes me 40 minutes to get from my house to John Crossland on average. I knew it was going to rain today, so I put in another five to 10 minutes into that. But then I didn't consider the 10 accidents along the way, <laughs> you know? And so I was able to work through that and kind of reroute myself to get here. But if you have that rigidity and you're like, okay, I always leave to get to John Crossland at 7.30 and you know, I can't leave at 7.15, that's gonna disrupt. You're gonna show up late to appointments. You're not going to get your things done on time. And that rigidity is very hindering. Um, I think we've all experienced that. You're going, you're trying to get somewhere and the road's closed and you're like, ah, okay, gotta reroute, you know, and you find a different way. But if you don't have that ability to shift and reroute and have that flexible thinking, what are you gonna do, just sit there? You know, and be stuck until the road opens? And who knows how long that will take. Um, also, struggling to find the right information in a word problem. So word problems seem to be challenging because there's so much information in a word problem and 90% of it is really just junk information, right? And it's that ability to kind of pull out like what information do I really need out of this? And especially as children get older and they're reading these much more complex problems, there's numbers in there or facts in there that really, I mean, they're, they're important in the big picture, but not for solving the problem. So, you know, being able to kind of tease out and figure out what information is necessary in any given moment to solve the, the task or the problem can be challenging. Also, um, the children that kind of get stuck with a plan. So they want to do something in a certain way. And again, we can think about like driving to the grocery store. I have a plan that I'm going to go into the grocery store and I'm going to get my eggs, my milk, my bread and check out. But now I get in the store and there's no eggs. So what do I do now? 
you know, do I get the other things that I need? Do I just forfeit? You know, what what is the plan? I need to be able to change up my plan when necessary. Um, impulsivity and risky behavior taking. So these can be the children that flee, that that want to escape. They they may even engage in as you get as children get older they may even engage in things like alcohol and drugs and not really have that good understanding as far as what are these things going to do to my body and how is it risking my health and my safety um, so you know I think it's really important to kind of tune in if you are having a child more so adolescence um, that is maybe doing some experimenting I mean we all do it I, something that's part of natural development, but is it starting to impact them? And is that because there's maybe an executive functioning component that we need to consider? Um, and even just thinking about like depression and anxiety, these are things that we really need to take seriously and investigate further. And so, you know, in light of that, that is something that I would definitely, if you do have concerns with those types of behaviors, definitely consult with a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and then, um, Social workers can be very helpful in this arena. And OTs can be helpful as well. Um, so that's definitely something to, to consider if you're seeing these, these problems and you're concerned. Um, children may be struggling with executive functioning if you see that they have good intentions to do things, like they talk about doing things, but it's like they never do those good things. So they talk about having a friend over, but yet they can't seem to organize that and say, you know, I want Johnny to come over and play, or mom, will you call Johnny's mom? You know, they don't ever kind of get into that initiation phase. They want to do it, they just don't know how to kind of put it into action. Um, hesitates is a similar, hesitates to make after school plans, so they end up kind of just going with the flow of what everybody else is doing. They're not really making decisions for, for themselves and developing their own interests. Um, Setting up or arranging materials. So these are the kids, like I talked about earlier, they, say they plan and they plan and they plan and they plan and they never really get to initiating and starting the task. And so this can be very frustrating for children if they see their classmates you know, finishing a test well before they finish a test. Um, kids do pick up on those social skills, you know, or those social interactions. If most of the class is done and turned in their paper and they're like on question number three, that can lead to a lot of stress. And so they may, just because everybody else has turned it in, they may turn theirs in early even though it's not completed. Mm -hmm. Or they may rush through just to answer questions but not really read the questions and answer them appropriately. Even though they know the answer in their mind, it's just they're rushing through the activity. Um, we talked a little bit about this, frequently gets upset about small things, like running out of his favorite snack at home, and it's like he had an expectation that, or she, that they were going to have like mini muffins, blueberry mini muffins, and you don't have blueberry mini muffins, you have chocolate muffins, and it's like, no, I, I need blueberry, and I can't move past this, and so then there's that meltdown. Um, this says, often thinks the teacher, but I think also parent is being unfair. Um, I think a lot of you have probably heard that. That's unfair. That's not fair. They get to do everything, you know. And it's kind of that ability to, to shift and understand that different people need different things um, throughout their day and even throughout their life. And so that that idea of being fair or unfair comes up a lot, I think. Um, these, these, I'm not gonna go through all of these just for sake of time. But I do want to point out one thing on this slide that I think is really important. Um, and I think we've all probably experienced this. And it says, doesn't know when they have overstayed their welcome at a friend's house. Um, I think this idea can kind of follow through even with adults. So if you've ever been in a conversation and it's like you talk to the person and then it gets to that like awkward like, uh, oh, okay, bye. And they're like still standing there and it's like, see you tomorrow or talk to you later nice meeting you and they're still standing there and you're like okay you know kind of having that like ability to say okay it's time to move it's time to move on and talk to somebody else or if it's not time to move on we need to engage in a new topic of conversation we've exhausted this topic of conversation um, but I think this is important for our kids to acknowledge too because 
I, I do see those children that kind of, they're putting themselves in the middle of the group, but the group is trying to kind of move forward and they're still kind of holding the group back. And so they're not kind of flowing with the group and moving forward to the next task. 